Perfect. So I'm here with Rita Salamone from Pennsylvania. And I'm very, very excited to hear about your healing story, Rita. Thank where you do you, where can you start? Where can you start? When did that start? <laughs> um, I, I think I'm going to start in the late 90s. I was living in Washington, D.C. I had just moved there in April of 98. And I worked for a big law firm. I was a um, case manager for a firm that did patent litigation. And it was very stressful. And I had been doing that for 20 years. And when I moved to DC, like I had always done for many years, I gave blood at the office blood drive and was told I had hep C and that I needed to see a doctor. Immediately, I had a very high viral load with over 10 million copies in a milliliter of blood. And I went to the doctor. I was being treated at Georgetown University Hospital in conjunction with the National Institutes of Health. I regularly went to both places. And I, um, just being honest, I have to say that the doctors at Georgetown, the words they used to speak to me was like, if I don't do this interferon ribavirin treatment, I'm going to die. So I followed their recommendation and I did this treatment. And I definitely was told, I remember telling my doctor, he was the head of gastroenterology. And I remember telling him that I could feel like my body was breaking down. And he kept saying, Rita, just hang in there for a little bit longer. So I should have listened to my inner guide and I didn't. So by the time I stopped, I, I was so debilitated. I, I quit on my own. I didn't do what he said to do. It was a week or two after that, I, I just quit and stopped the injection. The, the interferon was injections. I had to give myself every other day. And the, the ribavirin companion drug was an oral medication. And by the time I stopped, you know, before I even started, I was completely functioning. I could go to work, do my job. And, and, and when I stopped this treatment, I was so debilitated. I could barely walk. I had very limited use of my right arm, my nervous system, my thyroid, my immune system. I, I was just the biggest mess that I... I honestly, I have just big blocks of memory. Uh, if I hadn't been doing a job that I had been doing for years, I would have never been able to function. And I, I couldn't even walk to the Metro. I was very grateful that my company gave me these vouchers for this town car service that took me to work because I, when I had to go back to work, I only went in three days a week. And I remember standing in the hallway outside of my unit in the building I lived in. And I couldn't even remember how to get out of the building because when I was nervous, my brain would completely not work at all. So anyway, fast forwarding to I did a number of different holistic things. And what took me to there was in the course of dealing with all these autoimmune issues and trying to fix myself, I was pressured by my family to continue following these doctors. And one day, this rheumatologist 
I am grateful for her because here's what she said to me. I called to tell her about side effects. Her response, first she wanted me to just take the drug every other day and I said no. And she said, don't you worry, Rita. We have a million drugs we can try till we find the right one. And I said, thank you very much. And I hung up and I hit redial and I said, cancel my next appointment. Do you want to reschedule? No, thank you. And I never went back. And that was the end of me and Western medicine. That was it. And I went on a healing journey that involved a whole lot of different holistic stuff. And now I'll fast forward to February of last year. Wait a second, how brave of you. Oh my God, this is, this is so extremely brave. I'm just going. <laughs> Unbelievable. I know, I know, I, I've, I've been there and it's, uh, if you don't trust yourself and take care of yourself, Nobody, not even the closest in your family will be able to do that. And I, I totally, I so much honor you for, for your bravery because you were ready to lose everything. To obviously, when you continue, win everything, right? I think so. It's, it's such a big key and to... When I think back, I know that in my life, I was never a person that just blindly followed stuff. I, I was a yoga student, tra Qigong, Transcendental Meditation. I was always on that route. But in retrospect, I have to say, I, I was so... I think the level of fear that I let myself succumb to was so massive that um, I, I listened. But in now, also in retrospect, I have to say it took me to another place, which took me to all of what has happened since then, which is remarkable and so much to be grateful for. And it's, it's this, this like, like Dr. Joe Dispenza says, this voodoo curse. It just catapults yeah. you out of whatever you have known and believed. It's, um, it's such a shock. It's trauma. You, it is. It you really suffer. is. And we, we don't realize that, but this is, how can you function in a traumatized state? You know, it's. And, you know, I think with all the years that have gone by since then, I, I don't want to jump way ahead of my story, but I, I think I, I thought I had released all of it. But just recently, I received an email from one of the liver support groups that said um, it had a, an article on long-term side effects of the interferon treatment. So I was curious because they tell you all that's going to happen is mild flu-like symptoms. Well, that's not true at all. So I wanted to see what it had to say. I read the article, but what just devastated me was reading the comments that people wrote below. People saying things like, it's been years and I still can't go out of the house. I can't drive. All the muscle tissue in my legs shrunk, which is what happened to me. Um, and another, but anyway, the comments that people made about how they were still suffering. And I, I just, my heart went out to them, but I'm incredibly grateful because of what happened to me after, afterwards. The very first, when I started, I started doing all this research and trying to find holistic things that would help. And one of my doc, holistic doctors recommended this test called a blood print. And I had the blood print done and it identified 
secondary food allergies, which challenge your immune function. I did the test, followed the instructions. They said in three weeks, you should feel much better. And if you don't, they will refund the cost. And in three, I followed it. And in three weeks, I felt better, but it was nothing remarkable. And I continued. And in five weeks, I woke up one day I could use my arm, I could walk, I could bend my knees. I, I, I put on um, leggings and went out and, and jogged. I, I just, so that was the beginning of wow. the huge what kind transformation. Of test was that? What kind of test was that exactly? It's called a blood print. And, and then what, did you have to follow? What kind of pro protocol did you All diet, all diet. Just diet. And also they highly recommended um, something, and, and I had, I had, see, this was another part of it all. When I talked to the, again, the head gastroenterologist, I asked him one day, doctor, well, I don't want to say his name, what should I be eating? And he, his response was anything you can keep down. And I said, so you're saying it's okay to eat fried food and drink alcohol with this situation with my liver. He said, if you can keep it down, well, ironically, I have to tell you, when I moved to DC, it, when you look at all this picture, it's just too much to have been accidental. The very first case I was assigned to, and this was all patent work, right, was a litigation on the gene sequence of the hepatitis C virus, which is what I had. Isn't that so? And the attorneys that I was working with, not only were patent attorneys, two of them had PhD in infectious diseases. They knew more than my doctor. So I had to get tested every three weeks because this, this um, treatment caused red blood cells to prematurely um, disintegrate or whatever you want to call it. And you could become anemic very quickly. I get my blood test. The doctor tells me if your blood, if your red cell count goes down one more point, you're going to have to stop treatment. And I had only been on it a few, a couple of weeks. Not, it was my first test. I'd only been on it for three weeks. And I said, is there anything up? He interrupted me. He said, there's not. I said, well, dear, let me finish. I'm wanting to ask you, isn't there anything I can do to help my red cells? He said, there's nothing. The head of gastroenterology at a teaching hospital. I go to work. The guys always ask me, so how'd everything go? What'd they tell you today? I told them the story. In a nanosecond, the two attorneys in unison said, eat red meat, your red cell count will go up instantly. So I started eating red meat. And when I went back, my red cell count went up a few points. And my doctor said, "This we're going to have to redo the test. Something went wrong. Well, it came back exactly the same. And he asked me what I did. And I told him, because he asked and he was extremely angry because two lawyers told me what to do. And he's a doctor and he didn't even know that. So he never liked me the whole rest of my time that I had to go there. He was always very rude and mean to me. But, but if you know that he was the mirror of your inner being, yes. I think Hello, why do you ignore me? Why you go out and listen to outside lawyers and stuff? I'm here. So he was kind of the reflection of your inner truth, actually, mm -hmm. that knew you were on a kind of yeah. wrong track, right? But yeah. when you're in this situation, you don't realize that. You just feel being treated unfriendly or whatever mm -hmm. by this doctor, but actually he was kind of right, huh? Yeah, I mean. So, um, 
but then you found this diet and it was five weeks and and so i did continue on with it because what happens is that the different foods that even though they were perfectly good foods it was oats sesame seeds green things that you are eating that even though they're not bad foods your immune system reacts and you start producing antibodies and your immune system is challenged to deal with that. And when you remove, again, it's all about removing the obstacles that are stopping your, so when I removed, when all those obstacles were removed, my immune function improved and I was able to heal. And that was, that was the beginning. It was a really great starting point. And I went, on to do more things but this is where we get to the dr joe part so there was a, a thing that in all of those years that never went away and there were two things that never went away and one of them was that my brain would completely freeze I, and it happened more if there was the least little bit of stress I would just stop and I found if I closed my eyes, I could make it go away faster, but it would last anywhere from 10 to 45 seconds that I, it was like the electrical connections just stopped and I couldn't think at all. And the second thing was that I, I could walk, I could ride a bike, I could get, but I couldn't stand up. I could, if I stood up still, for more than a minute or two, I would off, I would faint. It would be a matter of time. I, everything would go and I would faint and I couldn't stand still. And how I functioned when I was working, you know, you're walking down the hallway, somebody see, oh, I got a question and they want to talk to you. And you know, when you're in a law firm, People don't want to work with you if you're sick. I mean, it's just it's sad to say, but it's culture. And but that's I, also what Dr. Joe Dispenza said. When you're sick, you are alone. People cannot be nope. around you. It's so I just adapted. That's one thing I have to say is that I, I figured out ways to adapt. And when I would be in a situation like that, I would casually move over and lean against the wall. Mm -hmm. or lean against the side of the elevator or I always found something to lean on or mosey on over to a chair to sit on or something and that's how I got through years I mean look at we're in 2020 and this was 2019 I was still in that situation and I also would do well during the day, but by 5 or 6 p.m. I couldn't be sitting up. I had to be laying down. And I, when I um, listened to one of the live streams from Portland, Oregon, a woman got up and told her story. And I realized that what she said was exactly what I had done. She was talking about her healing journey and said that she created a, like this bubble that she was in where if she did all of these things she felt good but when she went out of it she couldn't function well and she realized that she wasn't really healed and that's exactly what I did if I was at home eating all my organic stuff drinking alkaline water doing this and that I was good but if I tried to travel or do I wasn't good. I went down. So I realized, so anyway, February of 2019, I have no recollection of how I got to learn about breaking the habit of being yourself. And I remember I bought the book and I tried to read it and my brain function was so messed up. And, and I do have to preface all this with saying I went repeatedly back to the doctors and absolutely no one even had a clue of what to do to fix me, uh, of the, my brain stuff. 
And one of the doctors before I left DC and moved back to the Pittsburgh area where I grew up, one of my doctors just looked at me with all the compassion. He was really great. He looked at me with all this compassion and said, I'm so sorry that I can't help you, but you have to understand the interferon ribavirin is the equivalent of setting off a nuclear blast inside the human body. And quite honestly, you should be glad you came back this far. I don't have any other patients who did. And that was his parting words to me. He said he couldn't help me. So I left and came back here. Years went by. I'm still trying. And then I find Dr. Dispenza's book. And I tried to I tried to read it, couldn't understand it, and I don't even know how I came across these YouTube videos where somebody put these videos together where they, and I don't even know if this was someone connected to Dr. Joe or what, but he put these YouTube videos that summarized each of the chapters in like a 20, 25 minute video. And when he explained all this, it really, I understood it and thought, oh my gosh, this is so worthwhile. So I tried to read it, still couldn't. So here's what I did. And you know what? People thought I was crazy and I didn't really care. I bought the audio book and I had the book and I listened and read at the same time. I repeated every chapter over and over and over like a broken record, sometimes 15 times until I understood it. Then I went on to the next one. And when I got done- but This is this is real understanding, you know? And there's so many people, they're not being honest to themselves. They just go through, but it needs to go deep by repetition. And you did just the right thing, you know? and what makes you sad is you think it's because your brain didn't work properly but it's not that it's because to any other person this would have been the right way to totally dive into this knowledge very deep you know this yeah. is this is, needs to be done, but people don't do it. And then they don't have success because it's just on the surface and the repetition puts it so deep. And when you have the audio and the reading, you have two of your senses at the same time focused on the same information. This is amazing. You know, you did just the most amazing thing that's possible. Well, I did that with the whole book and I started doing the meditation. And then I sat there every day doing the long meditation, the one that's like an hour and 15 minutes or something. And, you know, you start healing all those emotional scars and everything. And it, um, I'll have to say, I continued because the very after the very first meditation, when I went about my day, I noticed that my ability to focus was greatly improved just from one meditation. One. So I thought that I was on the right path. So I did this every day and I you know how when you start releasing all that, you're crying. And I thought, I'm going to do this every day till there's nothing left in there. And um, it was probably close to two months I did that every day. And then I felt like I had um, done a good bit of, of the work and I did shift over to the shorter one, the one that's like 45 minutes that's connected with that, with the Breaking the Habit book. And I did that and then I bought Becoming Supernatural and did the same thing. I did the, um, the book audio with the 
visual, the same exact thing. So by this time, it's months have gone by and it's like May and I was so amazed by, I still had the brain freezes and couldn't stand up, but emotionally and everything else and energetically, I felt, felt a, a million times better than I had in decades like really decades. So I decided to look online. I went on the website. I took the um, progressive workshop and th there was another one connected. I can't remember. There were two that you got. Uh, that making you your mind matter? Making well, these were the two online mm -hmm. um, that were, one was there were 13 weeks all together of teaching and one was four and the other one was nine weeks and I I did that and I did the same exact thing I sat there and repeated it every day multiple times a day and then I signed up for Niagara Falls because it was a three hour I didn't have to try to walk through because I don't even think I could have walked through an airport to, to take a flight. I, so anyway, I, I signed up for Niagara Falls and I, it was a three hour drive from where I lived. So I went to Niagara Falls and I had, when I signed up, there was an opportunity for the brain scan and the coherence healing and I filled in those applications and um, Niagara Falls was really amazing and we did the coherence healing and the first it was three three days of coherence healing and the very first day I was I positioned myself at the corner of the room. So when we were standing there doing the pre preliminary meditation, I could lean against the wall and everything was okay. I did good and then I was able to get a chair to sit on when we were doing the healing. But the second day, it didn't work out that way and I was in the middle of the room and all I remember is I woke up sitting in a chair and this one purple woman on the stuff is at his staff was next to me and I opened my eyes and said where, what happened where am I she said you fainted twice just stay seated and the healing group I was in, when it was time to do the healing, she moved my chair over so I could sit there and participate. And I, I, I remember feeling like, and this is the truth, when I went back to my room that night, I thought, I really hope I don't get picked for a coherent healing because I don't think I could, Dr. Joe had announced, if you do get a healing and something good happens, we want you to talk about it and tell your story. And I thought, oh my God, if I had to stand up. And I was so terrified that I actually kind of wished I didn't get picked. So the next day was Sunday, the last full day. And um, it, was, it was morning and we're sitting there and our wonderful team leader comes up to the woman next to me and gives her the, um, you know, the, the thing, I can't Not remember. The token. Yeah. The coin. Yeah. She was a healy. And I, she was, I was so excited for her. And I thought, oh, isn't that wonderful? And then about 10 minutes later, the team leader comes back and says, oh, Rita, there you are. I was looking everywhere. I didn't even see you. And handed me a coin. And so 
I was a healer. And that was the last day I ever had a brain freeze or had trouble standing up. After 20 years of dealing with all of that, so it was nothing measurable. It wasn't anything anybody could do a test for. But I never had another brain freeze after that. And I never, I don't have any trouble standing up. I felt, I felt a huge sense of warmth and I could just feel all the energy as soon as I got into the circle. And um, it was really remarkable. I never had a mystical experience. I didn't have some kind of out of body thing. None of that happened to me. But I did have um, an amazing healing that has changed my whole entire life. Wow. Thank you so the, the much. The level of my brain function and just the ability to stand up. I mean, you, you don't even think about it. I got so used to when I was able to start going to the grocery store. You have to put your list in the order that the stuff appears in the store because you can't stand up too long to look for things. You got to move or else you're not going to make it through the store. And, and you have to go real early because if there's a checkout line, it ain't going to happen. There were times when there oh, was a goodness. checkout line, even early, and I'd have to like find something. I'd have to sit on one of the things of those displays that had a base because I couldn't stand up long enough to be in the checkout line when I was and that's all gone. You go shopping, normal. You stand in front of the shelf, check all the items out. I like, tried, when I would try to like Swiffer the kitchen, this is an example, Swiffer the kitchen floor, I had to sit on a stool and, and then move the stool. And, yet, and now I can actually vacuum. I can, I can, um, do whatever I need to do. I was outside um, planting flowers and it, so my, my, my life has completely changed from... And, and what did you feel? You were there in a circle of eight or six people? It was eight and, and it was... What did like you feel I, like? I, was, I had a lot of trouble. I was crying and... and um, and as soon as I laid down in that circle, I, I remember feeling such an overwhelming sense of peace. And I could feel all the energy. And it was, it was, that's all I can say. I didn't see anything mystical or anything like that. I just felt like my whole body was just full of peace and light and and after that, I never stuttered again. I never had to close my eyes. And I mean, it was like my brain didn't work at all. It wasn't like, oh, I can't remember that word. It, it was just, in fact, it was so bad that in December of the year before I started, so it would have been December of 2018, I begged my doctor to have a brain scan, my primary care physician, because it, it was just so bad. And um, they did a brain scan and, you know, they're looking for different things. And all they tell you is that you don't have like a tumor or anything like that. But my brain scan, the QEEG that was done at Niagara Falls, showed clearly that I had a very, it wasn't one of those remarkable ones that's off the hook, but it was a significant amount of activity now in parts that, that just were kind of dormant. Mm -hmm. And the other two things I have to say 
that happened when I was in that room, if the healings are in before you go back to the big room, was I realized that I had to forgive myself and the other people because I did harbor some ill feelings towards people who treated me unkindly during the worst of all of this. You know, someone that always said they were my best friend and told me there were better ways to get attention than by being sick. And it wasn't so much being hurt by the words, it was that I didn't get a chance to respond. The person hung up and when I tried to call back, I think we didn't, I didn't reach her again for maybe six months and it was very traumatic for me to feel like, oh my God. And I had to learn how to let that go. And then also not feeling worthy. That was another really big obstacle. And um, that's, 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 I also realized that these are traumas, let's say for our soul, that we don't realize it's a trauma when you get so rejected. And yeah. I experienced that in my life as well, and not only once. And um, I, it took me a while to realize how traumatized I was by these incidents. Because you think, oh, this, ha this happens, you know, or whatever. But this, this can go so deep that parts of your beingness, they just go dormant and say, I don't want to be hurt again. I just, I just not, I don't go anywhere I could be hurt. And this forgiveness. I think another thing that a lot of people do, which I definitely did, is that you go through long stretches where you keep telling yourself, it's okay, it doesn't matter. And when you say that, it just gets buried. And that's what takes all that work to get it out and let it all go and let it be gone. And for me, the key to any healing is that you are really able to open your heart. No grudges, no resentment, no holding back. And this, this is the, the this is the of full receivership and I, I think that's what's so important nothing else you know no pictures experiences but just being there totally innocent and open to receive love yeah and for me that brings the healing and to come to this point it's a journey right Oh, it really is. Yeah. And when I go back to your story, it started when you said no to the treatment. That was when your divine inner being kicked in and said, Rita, there's a different route in this life for you. Most definitely. And, and because I mean, in, in retrospect, looking back at it all, I remember thinking, I can't believe, I, because that wasn't me. I was not the person that was on medications and everything. I, I couldn't believe I did that. And then I... I but you know what? That that's the self... To hear, and that's why. That's the self-worth thing, you know? Because you think you, you have a good self-esteem and blah, 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 until to this point where it's all gone because the fear kicks in and then you realize, oh, it was a fake self-trust. It was fake self-esteem. It was actually never here. Right. And, and that's, that's when you just give up about yourself because you, you're not worthy and... This so is then no. you surrender. 
Right. You surrender, but you surrender to the outside and not to your inner knowing. Yeah. And, and that's what we, we, we are here for. I, I believe we are here to learn this, you know? Surrender is so important, but surrender to your inner truth and not to what people say, not to opinions, not to conditions, not to whatsoever is out there. You're so right. That's absolutely it. And I think every path is different. Yes. But the end is the surrendering with an open heart to the force that created us, that had us in mind in creation as a totally loved and perfect being. And this is where all our paths, you know, I see all the pathways, all the people that, that go and make their way. I think they end up in this knowingness about who they really are. And that's so wonderful, actually. Oh, yes, it really is. And to be a person that is so blessed to, to open up for receiving all these experiences, even though it's so painful, so many years. And it, it's so important to not think about lost years because they were not. Oh, that's so true. And, and when you think about it, when everything's like, when you feel like, you're just on top of the world you don't really learn anything it's only through all of the trials and tribulations and i really came to love and honor the fact that i had that virus because that's what took me to where i am now imagine liver, when i had liver by i had two liver biopsies they told me i i, I was probably 47, something like that. I'm 69 right now, and I was 47 when I got diagnosed, and they said that I had had this virus a minimum of 30 years, most likely 35. They could tell from my liver tissue. So I was a little kid, and I kept thinking, wondering, how did I get this? And I think it's then i there was a but i think you know what we create stuff mm -hmm. and it's their yeah. story that you had that for 30 years but i think they just created at the moment they discovered it you know it's yeah. because we are the creator and therefore it's so important what we believe and i would not go there and believe that because you were totally fine and happy. It's just an incident. It's just the name of a virus. It's just something that- oh, Exactly. And that's to, how I am now. But boy, to lead you to where you're now, to yeah. lead you to, to your true self and knowing about who you really are, you know? And that's it. You don't need to go whatever, blah, blah, blah because a lot of people try to understand and I think the only understanding that's really helpful is accepting that it needed to be there to to be a starting point for a total different route in life where regular people let's say don't go they just don't go there and yeah. it's amazing yeah. and it's yeah. wonderful All right and imagine if everybody knew about this how far could this corona stuff go mm -hmm. not even a week <laughs> not even a week and it would have been dead when everybody had this knowing that what you said because why virus is a virus so and, and i think that part of what led it is the fear the fear just helped the fear is the, fear is the fear big is the part of why everything's the way it is now. The Bible says the fear is the devil. Yeah. And that's, that's all it is, you know. And when we overcome all this, it's such a great example, Rita. I, I thank you so, so much for, for telling your story. And thank you. 
inspiring mm. people and I, I will do the best of my possibilities to spread it in my ne network, maybe also get translation on it. So people just get inspired and know that the impossible, the, the seemingly impossible is possible. And it's just, it's possible when it's possible, right? It's just there when you are there. And, exactly. and you don't know when, you can just go towards, towards and step by step. And at one point you, you meet the divine and then you just um, become one. Form. Yes. And you just become one and that's it. And I, I was in Dr. Judge Spencer's retreat in Mallorca in Spain. And I also was in a, a healer where a lady, she's later testimony, gave a testimony in, uh, I think, in Cancun, that she was healed from stage four um, cancer. Wow, how wonderful. And I was there oh, with her. I know. I was it's there with her. Real. And we just hugged and there was this glowing energy. And all she said is like, the way I feel right now doesn't allow me to be sick anymore. And she didn't know anything. She had to get the tests later, but she knew it. Like she knew she, in her heart. She, she, she knew, knew it in her, her heart. heart. And, and the, that was, you know how long it takes. It doesn't really take longer than an hour, but it just was like, she was so sure. Did you also feel that way when you go up? Yes. I did. I just felt, I remember feeling my whole body felt different. And when I stood up, I, I, all I can describe it as is that I had a sense of being grounded that I didn't have before. And I remember that was, it was so noticeable that I, um, I didn't forget that it happened. But isn't it I like feel grounded the, when the, I stood the divine up before. Plug, you got the divine plug plugged in yes. and you, it was plugged in and it's never going to be plugged out again. Right. I have one other thing I would like to share that um, I, I just, this warms my heart and I, I never forgot this either. So after we all left the auditorium and the event had officially closed and the lunch was served, I sat down next to a woman who began to tell me the story of a coherent healing circle that she was in. And there were eight people in each, eight healees, our healers, and then the healee would be in the middle. And she said, she got into this circle and there were only four, there were only six people. And she thought, wow, we're two people short, but it's okay, we can do this. And in the middle of it, she opened her eyes and there was two beings, two of the beings took up those two empty spaces. Wow. You probably heard Dr. Joe talk about the beings. He said in full of of, beings, you know? But in one of his teachings, he, he talked about how he was never really into all that stuff. And one day when he was in his hotel room, and forgive me if I don't exactly quote it, but he said he, he they came to him and told him that they could only lower their frequency enough and that they would like to help and if you raise the frequency of the room sir we will meet you there and there were people that were interviewed that had been healed that talked about the beings in the healing circle and then um this lady 
told me that it happened in the circle she was in. And I, I just thought that was really wonderful. That is for me, it connected to the fact of how I know that that's why we all wait outside the door of the auditorium. They're measuring the frequency of the room, and that's when the healies come in, is when the frequency is high enough. And, um, and that's what you do in your own meditation, you know? That's yeah. what you always do and what you can always do about changing how you see the world, how you think about your life. So it just makes a big, big difference in what kind of frequency you lead your life, what kind of people you surround yourself. And um, for me, it's very important to just say here, Nobody depends on being able to go to a workshop. Nobody depends on being a Healy. I think this healing energy and the healing possibility is everywhere. And we need just to work on raising the frequency, raising our mind our, to the possibilities that is other than what we learned other than what we've been taught, that there's, that there's so much truth that has not been taught to us. And when we open up to this in however way, yeah. we can get there. Because I, I, I feel a lot of times people say, oh my God, I'm doomed because and these have workshops, there's miracles happening and I can't go there. I don't have the possibility. I don't have the money. And for me, it's so important that this is not about it. It's about really raising yourself up to your own divinity. And people can help you, help you raise your energy and carry you. And you can ask for help anywhere, anywhere. Yeah. And I think that's so important. It's not something you need to be able to pay for. It's exactly. available. It's available, but you need to go there. You need to go there and not necessarily to whatever, but you need to go to the energy. Go you there to your heart. Open your heart, go to the possibility and let go. That's also what he says in his meditation. Let go of everything you believe. Let go of all the hurt, all the pain, all the suffering. Forgive and know you're worthy. You have to know you're, we're, we're all worthy, all of us. We are born worthy. But then the mind and brain fuck kicks in and yeah. then believe, believe all the bullshit that has, has been spoken about whatsoever and we take it on. And what has been taken on needs to be let go. Yeah. And that's a journey for everybody. And it's, it's not a freaky stuff, you know. I think it's so important to understand this is why we're here. This is why we are not to build a house, not to have a family, not to have a big business. We are just here to figure out who we really are. That's it. And learn love. That's it. And, and we are love. The frequency of love, not the emotion of love. I and, know. It took yeah. me so long and it also took me so much suffering. Um, but this knowing that you also had is always there yeah and it just doesn't let you off the hook it just keeps you going and going and going you lose family and friends and whatever but it there's no way you cannot go it's just it just you're pushed pulled drawn i don't know but i just know that this knowing is here and that leads the way you find what you need in the, in the moment where you need it, when you're open. Yeah. And that's amazing. Yeah. And I love it that more and more people understand it. And even more, people need to share and need to share their stories, need to share their insights. Because a lot of times we are like, 
who should be interested in and why should I cut blah 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 all the clutter in the mind but it's so important and I'm so grateful that you just responded to my um, to my post in the group and um, I'm I'm doing a lot of German I actually started um, as an explainer in German of Dr. Joe Dispenza's work in German oh. because I realized all the translations are translations and it's it needs explanation <laughs> because it's not the same so I started to share in German that's actually how I started my work with my own healing um, because I, I, I never wanted to do it in German because I feel so much more comfortable in this healing stuff and I read the books in English. It's my home in English. And in German, it felt so awkward at the, at the beginning because we, it's so hard to translate this because sometimes for one English sentence, you need like three German sentences to make sense of it. And that's how I grew into it and uh, just deliver also Dr. Dr. Joe's message in my words. And I found out there are so many people grateful of it. And, and then I kept doing it. That, I'm sure that makes all the difference in the world, having your input in the translation because of the language difference. Because whereas it reaches people in a way that it wouldn't have otherwise. And especially, you know, for instance, the word mind has so many different meanings in German, depending on which context you use it in. So if you just go there and make a translation, say the word mind means geist. Yes. It's not always this meaning. It's just not. <laughs> so all these kind of things, they did the, the, translation, the translated books. They just don't deliver that. And that's all, that was my task to, to deliver meaning and not translation. <laughs> yes. How wonderful. That's really wonderful. Yeah, and it it's just a also- a way to be of service to the people that speak German and read German. And uh, a month ago, this download came to me, make an online Congress healing in the new time right oh. now so this is what i'm preparing and i found wonderful speakers um, that all have a different approach to healing which actually ends everything in the same but one works with horses the other one works with music the other one works with sound of the own voice and so i found like 15 different speakers that will speak at the online congress and just talk about how they approach the subject of healing right now so bring well, it will all you be posting a link for people to join into that i would love to be it's an online German reader oh is it okay i'm so sorry oh, it's okay <laughs> it's okay so, but maybe, you know, one day I will, will be able to host the BLANG um, Congress, online Congress. You never know from what starting point it leads to, you to somewhere. And, and at some point there will probably be a real-time translation available um, through a software program. You I bet never so, know. Yeah. It will probably happen. So, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm using. That's also, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing your interview there because, you know, a lot of Europeans speak really good English. So they're absolutely able to understand our interview. And maybe somebody comes up and says, yes, I'm going to translate. Or maybe I'll do it when I have the time to do it. But it will be in the ears of those who need to hear it because you were open and you, you you said i'm sharing because i need to <laughs> thank, thank you, you so much. thank you very much
I'm so, so grateful for the opportunity. I really, really am. Oh, wonderful, Rita. So 